Hello and welcome to Let's Play Phoenix Strike Ace Attorney. I'm Wise Mumir. Let's get the show on the road. First tournament. Already off to a very good start. <laughs> Damn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like you. I'll make it look like he did it. Yeah, I love this game so much. <laughs> August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, Numero Dos. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. I'm glad, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes a murder trial right off the bat like this. Nor should anyone. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life. Everything. It's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death. Despair. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Uh. Nick. Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Larry Potts. <laughs> oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. Ah, uh, he'll be the butts of this jo of the joke for the rest of this series. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a nag for getting himself in trouble. 
One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. And that and I own one. Which is why I took this case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District, district Court, Courtroom, Numero Dos. Oh man, this looks so much better than it did back on the way. <laughs> Court is now in session. For trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? It, yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little bit nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we could have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Gold. Hands. Faking. Eyesight. Fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Phoenix Wright, Larry Butts, or Mia Fey. Um, the defendant is me, right? <laughs> right, have you completely lost your mind? Focus! The defendant is the person on trial. You're his lawyer. Um, er, um, oh yeah, right. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. You did pass the bar, didn't you? Maybe. Sorry, I couldn't hear your answer. I'll ask once more. More strolling around. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The, um, defendant. That's, uh, Mia Fey. The wrong, right? Look, I have to leave. I have to go home. I'm, I'm expecting a delivery. Oh, come on, Chief. There's no need to be going so soon. Is there... Listen, right? The defendant is the one on trial, your client. I can't even read this text with a straight face. <laughs> I'm cracking up. I mean, that's about as basic as you can get. I put my foot in it this time. I've got to relax. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear your answer. I'll ask once more. Please name the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant, well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wit about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's 
way. Uh oh. No, no way. I forgot I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Yeah. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time. Okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Okay, fine. Yeah, Cindy's autopsy report and attorney's badge. And if we check profiles, Mia Fang, Larry Butts, Cindy Stone, and Winston Payne. I love the name puns. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Well, my first instinct is a Teen Titans villain, Your Honor. Oh, um, wasn't it Miss Block? Miss Cinder Block? <laughs> the person in question was not- was a victim of murder, not ill-conceived naming, Mr. Wright. Eh, yeah, that one the jury is out on. Right. If you forget something, use tab to check the court record and jog your memory. A mistake in court could cost you the case. I'll ask you again. Who's the victim in the case? Why, that would be Mia Fey. Um, Mia Fey? Whoa, whoa. What? How can I be the victim? Oh, right, sorry, I, uh, it was the first name that popped into my head, and the court record writes, remember to use it when you're in a pinch with tab. <laughs> yeah, I love this consequence-free tutorial. Yeah, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone? Correct. Now, tell me what the cause of death was. She died because she was poisoned, hit with a blunt object, strangled. <laughs> uh, you know what time it is. Wrong answers. Let's go poison. Oh, right. Wasn't she, um, poisoned or by her poison? You're asking me? Um, Steve, help me out. Check the court record. Tab, remember? Jeez, give a guy a break. Let me ask again. She died because she was... Right, she was strangled, wasn't she? Please tell me that was you talking to yourself. If you wait to hang yourself, Mr. Wright, you're welcome to do so, but not inside my courtroom. I suppose there's nothing to do but give you another try. Yeah, yeah, she died because she was hit with a blunt object. And she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. I see several reasons why we shouldn't proceed. I fucked around for about 15 minutes now. <laughs> you seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor, because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, 
first a question from the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright just told us the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you care to explain to the court what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the banker. It was found next. It was by, found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see the court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. This evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne. The prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any f in information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Well, Larry's going to probably... Yeah, thanks, Phoenix, taking the words right out of my mouth. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited, easily. This could be bad. <laughs> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopa uh, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. He just wasn't taking my phone calls, or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dump. In fact, if she had completely abandoned you and was seeing on her men, if she had just returned from overseas with one of them, the other day, One of them. Lies, all of it. I don't believe a word of it. You're on the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day she died. Uh, the day before the day she died. Hmm. Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her gifts and money. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Ew. We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Wait and see what happens? Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing on me. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Uh, wins is a sound effect. Great. <laughs> Dude, Nick. What do you mean, irrelevant? That cheating she dog? I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna tell her. I'm gonna get to the bottom of. Uh, get to the bottom of this. Okay, great. Thank you, Larry Butts. I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, it's quite. Yeah, no matter what you do, this does not go well. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, didn't you? Yeah, he did. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly. I know I'll send them a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant's lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is, is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Gee, I wonder what his name fun is. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Payne. The prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Saw It to the stand. Mr. Saw It. You sell newspapers. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Saw It. You may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Well, he saw it. Obviously. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man playing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry, so... Uh, I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. And I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I fought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found the public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran, without doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against testimony like that. <laughs> Incidentally, why wasn't the phone working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. And mine. Now, Mr. Wright, yes? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. Right, this is going to go into the basics of what cross-examination is. Yeah, he exposed the lies because he was lying. Okay, I'm just gonna skip through because I'm running on a half-hour time limit here. A self-imposed time limit, but a time limit nonetheless. Yeah, 
looking at now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you thought it was strange. Only not moving dead. You found the body at 1 p.m., are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4. There was no body or no body to find at 1 p.m. And how do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, um. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sullet? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, uh, okay, that's a really good question. <laughs> Great job, Fred. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story folds apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? I'm not reading it again. Okay, I guess I am. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. No, it wasn't. Blackout. Yeah, no, I'm not even going to bother reading the rest of his testimony there. Just, no. Obvious lie is obvious. Yeah, no, no. Couldn't have been. I wouldn't have been watching anything, really. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard the television or video. I, well... Uh, no, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Well, wait. I remember now, Mr. Soy. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. But my apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been a shock to find the body. Very well, Mr. Soy. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time, I saw it. There was a table talk in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a cock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. And I spawned the contradiction. We won't get to it before I end the video, though. So, next time we finish this case.